Can you believe it? Flight 8 has just wrapped up and already we have our first major revelation about the next mission. SpaceX's top leader Elon Musk has officially announced the launch date for Flight 9. And let me tell you, it's nothing short of bold, ambitious, and downright mind-blowing. Despite the challenges of the last flight, Musk's confidence is through the roof. So when will Flight 9 take off? Why is Musk so sure about it? And how is SpaceX gearing up for this next big leap? Let's dive into all of it on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Flight 8 was undeniably one of the most thrilling and intense Starship missions to date. From the pre-flight delays caused by technical challenges to the tense anticipation surrounding Super Heavy's catching attempt, especially after its engines failed. The entire mission was a roller coaster of emotions. And then came the dramatic journey of the ship itself, culminating in an explosive finale reminiscent of Flight 7. Yet despite the setbacks, SpaceX managed to achieve another major milestone. Super Heavy successfully landed once again using the Mechazilla arms, reinforcing the company's push toward full reusability. Meanwhile, Starship faced another catastrophic failure, proving that there are still major hurdles to overcome. Immediately after the flight, updates flooded in from both SpaceX and the FAA, shifting everyone's attention to one person, Elon Musk. Strangely, Musk did not immediately react to the flight, leaving many wondering what was going on behind the scenes. But when he finally did speak out, he made headlines with a series of bold statements, none more shocking than his revelation about the timeline for Flight 9. First, he acknowledged the setback, tweeting, Today was a minor setback. This admission was significant. The fact that the same issues from Flight 7 reappeared in Flight 8 showed that the upgrades SpaceX implemented had not yet reached their full potential. And in the fast-paced world of aerospace innovation, standing still means falling behind. Musk followed up with two more tweets, not easy, making life multiplanetary. And it was an upper stage slash ship failure, TBH, or to be honest, but we learned a good amount in building the new ship design and the flight. What stood out was Musk's transparency. He openly admitted the failure, something many leaders would hesitate to do. But in classic SpaceX fashion, he also emphasized the lessons learned and the drive to push forward. And then came the game-changing announcement. Progress is measured by time. The next ship will be ready in four to six weeks. That's an incredibly ambitious timeline. If Musk's estimate is correct, Flight 9 could launch as early as the first week of April, or at the latest, mid-April. Given the challenges of Flight 8, this seems like a daring goal, but when you break it down, it's entirely possible. The biggest advantage SpaceX has right now is experience. The issues with Flight 8 were largely a repeat of those seen in Flight 7 which includes engine leaks, fires, and failures that ultimately led to the ship losing control. We even saw similar patterns of debris and burning wreckage visible from far-off locations. Super Heavy also encountered more engine failures during its boost-back burn, with one engine failing to restart before landing. While these problems sound severe, SpaceX has already been investigating them since Flight 7. This means they don't need to start from scratch, they simply need to expand their ongoing analysis and refine the fixes they've already been working on. Because of this, the investigation into Flight 8 is expected to be faster, and the necessary improvements can be made more efficiently. Additionally, regulatory hurdles may not be as significant this time. Since Flight 9's mission is unlikely to change, SpaceX probably won't need a modified launch license from the FAA. The biggest factor influencing FAA approval will be the environmental and safety impact of the explosion. If no significant damage is reported and there are no risks to public safety, the investigation and approval process could wrap up quickly. For comparison, the FAA took about six weeks to approve Flight 8 after Flight 7, reducing the turnaround time to seven weeks, but the agency has been streamlining its processes, and with no major changes to the mission, Flight 9's approval could come even sooner. John Edwards, SpaceX's vice president of Falcon Launch Vehicles, emphasized the company's relentless pace in a tweet. Never give up. After Falcon 1 Fly 3, we learned the hard way that the night is darkest just before the dawn. Keep your head up, keep pushing, we're gonna get there. And the reality on the ground supports this mindset. The hardware for Flight 9 is already moving through its testing phases at remarkable speed. B-16 has been undergoing cryogenic testing at Massey. 
after which it will return to the production site for engine installation before heading to the launch pad for static fire testing. Meanwhile, S-35 will likely follow a similar timeline, undergoing its own cryogenic and static fire tests before integration with the booster. One major advantage here is that Starship's testing schedule isn't entirely dependent on the launch pad, allowing different components to be prepared in parallel. Additionally, the launch pad itself has been refurbished quickly after recent flights, making it unlikely to cause delays. If everything stays on track, SpaceX could have Flight 9 fully prepared within the next four to six weeks. Given the rapid turnaround, integration testing might even be skipped, just like with Flight 8 further accelerating the timeline. The mission profile for Flight 9 is expected to remain largely the same. Super Heavy will once again attempt a landing using the Megazilla arms, and if successful, it'll mark the third consecutive booster recovery. Meanwhile, Starship will focus on advancing in space operations, including payload deployment, engine relighting in orbit, re-entry with improved heat shield and engine protections, and finally, an ocean landing. All signs point to an imminent launch, making now the perfect time for predictions. Personally, I'm betting on April 20th. Launching exactly two years after the first ever Starship flight. What do you think? Drop your predictions in the comment section down below, and while you're at it, type Let's Go number 9 to show your support for the SpaceX team. Despite the setbacks, SpaceX continues to push forward with the same relentless determination that has defined the company from the start. Musk has set an aggressive timeline, but if any team can meet such a challenge, it's SpaceX. If Flight 9 goes as planned, the next major milestone will be Flight 10, which could finally attempt a full catch of Starship using the Mechazilla arms. While it's disappointing that this won't happen in Flight 9, the delay gives SpaceX more time to refine Tower B and ensure a successful first attempt at catching the Super Heavy. No matter what happens next, one thing is certain, SpaceX is making history with every launch, and we're all witnessing the future of of spaceflight unfold in real time. So don't miss a second of the action. Like the video, subscribe to our channel, and stay tuned as we continue following SpaceX's incredible journey. Together, we'll watch as Starship takes its next giant leap toward the stars. SpaceX has several other crucial systems to refine before attempting it. First and foremost, the re-entry process presents one of the biggest challenges. Unlike Super Heavy, which only needs to survive a brief descent through the atmosphere, Starship must endure extreme heat and aerodynamic forces upon re-entry from orbit. To handle this, the heat shield system requires significant upgrades. After the issues with Ship 29, or S-29 for short, during Flight 4, SpaceX has explored several improvements, likely involving new heat-resistant materials and the possible introduction of an ablative system. These upgrades appear to be carrying over into ship version 2, with additional cooling systems and metallic tiles undergoing testing. Of course, these enhancements will continue to evolve based on post-flight inspections and real-world performance data. Next, the flap system demands close monitoring. While it represents a major improvement in V2 compared to V1, it has yet to be fully tested in actual flight conditions. SpaceX must assess its effectiveness during upcoming missions, particularly in the high-stress environment of re-entry. The flaps are critical for controlling descent and stability, ensuring Starship maintains the correct orientation before transitioning to the landing phase. If any weaknesses emerge, further refinements will be necessary. The engines are another vital area for improvement. The failure during Flight 7, which cut Ship 33's journey short, underscored the importance of reliable propulsion. Deceleration, navigation, and landing all depend on the engines performing flawlessly. A single failure at the wrong moment could jeopardize an entire mission. SpaceX will need to reinforce the reliability of Raptor engines, ensuring that they can handle the demands of both spaceflight and the intense landing sequence. Beyond Starship itself, ground systems must also be prepared for the catching attempt. Current speculation suggests that Tower B will be used for the first ship catch. The tower is already completed with the first sections of its chopsticks installed and additional orbital launch mount components under construction. The chopsticks, designed to catch Starship as it descends, will be the main focus, requiring precise coordination with the vehicle. Key elements such as landing pins, landing rails, and actuators must be fine-tuned to ensure a perfect match with Starship's catching points. Additionally, the tower's communication system will be reinforced, as it must be in order to prevent abort scenarios like the one seen in Flight 6. 
Meanwhile, upcoming test flights will be critical for identifying and resolving remaining issues. SpaceX must complete several unfinished objectives, including payload deployment, controlled reentry, and landing with the latest V2 upgrades. At the same time, previous successes, such as landing Super Heavy and relighting engines in space, must be maintained and refined. Ultimately, mastering a controlled vertical landing for Starship is the final step before attempting a full Mechazilla catch. Each test flight brings SpaceX closer to this historic moment, and the excitement is only growing as these key systems take place. Now, let's dive into an exciting update on Virgin Galactic's bold new venture this month. The company is gearing up to assemble the first of its next-generation suborbital space planes, the Delta spaceship, marking a major milestone in its ambitious plans. This groundbreaking news came straight from Virgin Galactic's executives during an earnings call on February 6th, where they confirmed that assembly will take place at their new state-of-the-art facility near Phoenix, Arizona. This marks a crucial step toward the company's commercial flight operations, which are slated to begin in mid-2026, following an extensive series of test flights starting in spring of 2026. Virgin Galactic's CEO, Michael Colglazier, confidently stated, The production and launch timeline for the new ships remain on track, with our first commercial research space flight expected in the summer of 2026, and the first private astronaut space flight in the fall of 2026. We're able to be more specific with projecting our timeline timelines because we now have line of sight to the delivery dates of each and every tool and part that supports assembly. Cole Glazier also highlighted the significant progress Virgin Galactic has made, both in-house and with suppliers. Essential components and sub-assemblies are being prepared for shipment to the Phoenix facility, where final assembly and rigorous testing will take place. The company is optimistic about the speed of its testing phase, largely because the Delta spaceship is built on lessons learned from the VSS Unity the suborbital space plane that Virgin Galactic retired last summer. With this established foundation, the testing process is expected to be streamlined and efficient. Once the Delta spaceship enters its research flight phase, Virgin Galactic aims to conduct 6 to 10 flights carrying payloads, company employees, and eventually private astronauts. As operations scale up, the company plans to increase its launch frequency to twice a week. Colglazer elaborated, we will prudently ramp ourselves up a little bit as we lean into that, but I believe 2027, if not right January 1st, right at the beginning of that year, we should be up at a pace that we've talked about. Beyond launching private astronauts, Virgin Galactic is also eyeing deeper space missions, including surveillance and reconnaissance operations for government agencies. This marks a significant expansion of the company's vision, putting it in direct competition with industry giants like Blue Origin's New Shepard. Virgin Galactic's ambitious plans for the Delta spaceship could shake up the suborbital spaceflight market, setting the stage for an intense industry showdown. Will this next-gen vehicle give Virgin Galactic the edge over its competitors? Stay tuned, space tourism is about to get a whole lot more exciting. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly in the latest details of SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.